Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And this is a quick gossip chat. Okay. Um, If you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a whole Jay Bird. Jay Bird. Da, 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 da. Okay, and all that good shit. You know, like, comment, subscribe, share. Check the description box below for all the stuff to contact me and all that good stuff. But remember, subscribe, watch videos, and hit the goddamn like button. Okay, let's get through these couple few stories that went on today. And I'm like, let me just talk about it. Um, First up, okay, and y'all, I'm just pulling it right from the blogs. Apollo Nida, who was just, he just... Got out of jail not even a week ago. Okay, he serves almost eight years in jail, and his ass is back in jail. Okay, now we know Apollo because he was on Atlanta Housewives, made the phase of, was it phase of Parks? Phase of Parks, he went back to jail for, like, fraud. What was he in? It wasn't all open and stuff. It was like, oh, he was charged with bank, mail, and wire fraud, along with ID theft. And he pled guilty to all those charges, and he was sentenced to eight years. So, he done, did most of the time. He got out recently. He was on parole. Okay, he was in like a little halfway house. But we all know when you're in a halfway house, there's a lot of rules that you have to follow. Well, apparently, Apollo did not follow them all. Because he was what? Sent back to jail. So, I'm like, what? Now, they won't say exactly what he did. All the U.S. Marshal said was, this is per pay six, he was taken back into custody. I wouldn't say it was an arrest. It wasn't an arrest, okay? Because it was not a new charge. It was an order of the court to bring him back into custody um, for him breaking a technical condition of his release. It says they, they took him back to the Federal Bureau of Prisons and they would deal with him since he was in their custody before. Now, you know, Apollo was 40. Okay, he's 40 years old. His original release date was October 15th of 2019. Bro, you got out in June. Now, you back in there. He may stay in there until... Um, October, because usually that's what happens, okay? They don't, the, the chance that you get is we're going to let you out into the halfway house, okay, bruh? And if you do that, you can be out in the world with these couple few rules, these couple few rules, and you don't have to deal with the prisons, okay? The prison rules is way more strict. I might, I wonder what he did. Like, I wonder if it was something as simple as, oh, he violated a curfew. Or maybe he wasn't supposed to have a cell phone. It's stuff like that. Y'all know when I did it about the, I'm going to say the real name. When I did it the bad guy. <laughs> um, he was in the halfway house this years ago. And in the halfway house, you could not have a cell phone. But he wanted a cell phone. And so he had a cell phone. And I kept telling him, you don't need no goddamn cell phone. But he also wanted to talk to me. And they found the cell phone. And he did end up going back for like maybe... Like, two months. It was something real little or whatever. Um, But, yeah, they have these little rules where you have to follow or your, 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 your ass go back. Y'all know on Love and Lockup, the dude Michael, who was on there and arrived, just, he was just 10 minutes late to visit his parole officer. And they sent him back to jail for, like, four or five months. So, Apollo, whatever you did, brother, I hope it was worth it. I'm like, was he having sex and he missed curfew? Was Because, you know, he got that girlfriend, Shireen. Y'all know Shireen was on to say yes to the dress at Atlanta, honey. And so I'm like, she just like, damn it, my, my reality show dreams have gone down the drain. Okay, next up, Tracy Ellis Ross. If y'all follow me on my social media, y'all know I like Daria. I have a couple Daria shirts. I post Daria every once in a while in the, in the thumbnail because sometimes it matters. Tracy Ellis Ross, okay, will be doing a spinoff, okay, a spinoff of the Daria show. She's going to be the voice of, um, why well, I forgot her name. Uh, <laughs> what's the girl's name? Why? Well, I can't remember the name. Lord Jesus. Oh, Jody. Jody. Um, now Jody was a good friend of Daria. And so it's going to be a whole spinoff of that. Uh, Tracy Ellis Ross will do Jody's voice. And she will also be the EP of the show, the executive producer. It's going to, I'm not, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. 
and it was it used to be on um, MTV back in the nineties. It was a great great show. It was on from ninety seven to from ninety seven to two thousand two, and so this is a rebooted spinoff. Okay, and the spinoff will be called Jody. It's gonna be an adult animated comedy. Okay, adult adult people <laughs> animated comedy, and um, I'm like that's so cute. So the synopsis says Jody will follow. Um, Jody will follow her as she becomes, as she, girl, will follow Jody as she comes into her own and enters the workplace and her first post-college job in tech. Other former students of Lawndale High will also appear. It says Jody will satirize, satirize workplace culture, Gen Z struggles, the art, art, girl, social media and more with themes of empowerment across the gender and racial lines, exploration of privilege, a wicked sense of humor, and it will be the first adult animated sitcom to center around an American African American female lead in nearly two no oh yeah two decades so twenty years. I mean I'm happy you know it's going to be on MTV. MTV I think you know I like it. Okay I like it. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be funny. Y'all know the Boom Docs is also coming back with the original creator, Aaron Magruder. I can't wait for that. Um, even another show I like is coming back, um, Rick and Morty. I love Rick and Morty. Love it. Pickle Red. You know, I love that show. That got like 70 episodes. I like funny adult cartoons, okay? I go to bed at night and I'm usually listening to Bob's Burgers or... Or American Dad, or some of the cartoons that be on, you know, um, Nick, was it Nick? No, not Nick at Night. Um, what's it called? The, the, the adult TV, okay? Let's say that the adult cartoon, cartoon network, with the adult stuff or whatever. So I'm happy to see that. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with kind of re examining different shows and bringing other parts of it back. So I'm excited excited okay and speaking of excitement okay congratulations are in order for da -da 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 -da. cassie cassie okay yes diddy's ex-girlfriend the singer cassie who had moved on okay she had wholeheartedly moved on to her dude, her boyfriend, okay, whose name happens to be Alex Fine. Yep, Alex, A-L-E-X, Fine, F-I-N-E. He's a trainer and stuff, and they've been dating for a while. It's who she was dating after she started with, with Puffy. They're having a baby, okay, a whole baby girl. And now I'm like, oh, it's so sweet. It's so cute, okay. So they took these photos of them in the car, and you can see the little baby, you know, the little baby booties hanging off the off the um the rearview mirror. They took um this other photo, if you can see their actual face, okay. He fine, ain't he? Girl, ain't he fine? Anyway, so. You know, she just put how, you know, she can't wait to meet her baby girl. He wrote a whole, girl, a whole four, five, not four, five paragraphs. But he wrote a couple different things to kind of, you know, welcome the daughter into the thing. He wrote a letter to Cassie. He says, I promise you that I will do every single thing in my power to support you and help you. I promise that you will never be alone. I promise that you will be loved beyond expectation and will and we will show our children how to be in a healthy relationship ain't that right a healthy relationship i promise to always come home with a great attitude and give our children and you undivided attention i promise i always keep you and the child first nothing else before you i promise you will be showered in kisses and hugs every single day i promise that i will be the best Father, baby, daddy, you two are my greatest loves. I have and will ever have. I cannot wait for the rest of our lives together and to raise a beautiful, happy child and our beautiful and happy life. Okay? And then that was the letter to Cassie. He also wrote a letter to his daughter saying, I will be the first man in your life and will show you the greatest love. Oh, oh screen. Uh, I hate when the screen pops off. And show you the greatest love and affection now and forever. I never thought my heart could grow bigger after meeting your mother. Then I found out we were having you and I instantly fell in love. No, I instantly felt a love that is so indescribable. I promise to be at every dance recital, 
concerts, sporting events, school plays, whatever you decide to do, I will be there and support you. I am your number one fan. I promise to be a man that you and your mother look up to and love. I will always listen and put the both of you first. I will show you a healthy relationship and how you deserve to be treated. I promise to never approve of it. <laughs> I promise to never approve of any boy you like because they would never be good enough for my baby girl. Sorry. Uh, he said, I, pro I can't promise that I won't embarrass you because I will give you so many kisses at every school drop off. I will be the dad that never forces my opinions on you. I will love forever. I will love whatever you do in life as long as you're happy. I promise. Okay. I promise that I will be kind, sweet, and you will always be daddy's little girl. I promise to love you. Every single, every single second unconditionally until my last breath, you're perfect to me and I always will be. I'm like, ain't this some shit? Now, I seen somebody comment on the post that he made and said, somebody must have sent, C uh, sent Cassie whatever prayer, damn it, wrong thing, whatever prayer that Sierra used to get Russell and she got Alex Fine. I say, look, this is the thing, though. We can't act like we know Alex Fine. And I say, and this is not to be a dig and say, you know what I'm saying, he ain't shit. Let that man show and prove first. Okay, let that man show and prove and be there first. Like, we like Russell now because he is shown and proven. Give me more than words. But, I mean, Cassie looks happy. She looks happy. Okay, not that she did not look happy with Diddy, but I feel like this relationship is something completely different than what it was when she was with Diddy. I, I, I agree with that. I think, you know, there was a reason she was with him for so long and never had one of his children. I think it's a thing of she knew that Diddy would not be a healthy, long-standing relationship. And now she's actually in a relationship that seems like it's just him and her and they want to be happy where Diddy was like, you know, here and there and everywhere, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. And, it, you know, so congratulations to Cassie on her first baby, on his first child, okay? And Cassie was like, I'm not going to be, you know what I'm saying, just the next baby mama. And, you know, kudos, kudos, kudos. Okay, next up, Nick Cannon. Okay, Nick, I don't have y'all y'all know Nick Cannon. I don't need no pictures. Um, But Nick, where did it go? Oh. Nick Cannon is going to be a radio host somewhere, y'all. And this went away. So let me find it real fast and quick because I know where I got it from. I got it from the Jasmine brand. Okay. So Nick Cannon is going to have his own radio show. Um, he, It was Big Boy was on the radio today. And he announced that he is going to be the new morning host on LA Powers 106 radio station. Um. Nick Cannon, you know, he does all, he sees all, he he just, he's a chameleon of jobs, okay? He always is doing something. You know, he is the current host of MTV's Wild and Out. Um, he also does The Masked Singer, and now he's going to be a radio host in L.A. I feel like I would love to be a radio host. I feel like, well, I talk too fast sometimes, though, so that may be something. But I feel like, okay, I have the voice and the talent to be a radio host, but I would not want to be on in the morning. So I'm not a morning person, okay? I would be the one who's up at night with the night owls making y'all laugh, okay? Who wants to sometimes be up at night and only listen to slow songs? Why can't they be sad songs, okay? Why can't they be conversation songs? I'm just saying, I need to get a radio show. But, okay, so Big Boy did announce it. As Big Boy was also on Power 106 there. Um, and I'm like, well, let's, you know, that's cool. Nick Cannon can be different things okay sometimes he's a bit corny but sometimes he's very he's very funny and very in, in, enjoyable i want to see what it's gonna be like i i like watching the interviews that people do on radio shows i'd be so frustrated on youtube when i'm like oh my god so and so youtube for the for their show why don't they have more interviews? Like, just please do more interviews. I love listening to interviews because I'm also nosy. Um, so I I'm, I want to see what he gonna do next. Um, this whole Tristan Thompson, Khloe Kardashian, you know, um, Jordan Craig thing, honey. So I feel the two different ways about it. For one, I feel like they are saying, oh, you know, Jordan is finally talking. Jordan actually isn't talking. Her and Tristan, you know, were going back and forth for child support things with the kid. 
the deposition and the court documents got out. So it's not as if Jordan was somewhere like giving interviews. And, and that's, that's Jordan. If y'all have never seen her, that's Jordan. That's So that's Tristan's first child's mother who also used to be married to Tyga for a little bit years ago. Mm -hmm. A whole family connection, okay? Trust in the girls is kind of crazy. So, again, it's not like, you know, Jordan is out here, like, really spilling beans and really having conversations and really out here giving interviews saying, you know, Chloe, you know, she's it's stuff that people that was released per the court documents from the child support thing that they had going on. Now, she said in these court documents how Thompson, okay, Tristan gave her a hundred and twelve thousand dollars back in 2016 and it was an exchange for her to agree to not date anybody even though he was dating Chloe. And I'm like well that's stupid and so for the most part her and Tristan's lawyer were kind of going back and forth because the lawyer like why would you think that was a bribe for you not to date anyone and she said you know because he said um he would help me out if I wasn't dating anybody or whatever and if I would be able to come see him. Where Tristan says how, well, it wasn't about her not dating anybody or whatever. It was me saying, if you a single woman, you know, I just don't want you having different people around my kid. Tristan, no one believes you. Tristan is, look, Tristan could say right now, do you know that Flame of Hot Cheetos is hot? I'll say, no, they're not. They're not hot, Tristan. Why, why, could you a liar? Tristan cannot be trusted i just i don't i think Chris, he's a whole liar and i feel like he trying to act like i mean i you lied to chloe you lied to jordan you lied to them both so i, I don't i believe that he said hey you're not dating i take care of you you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just kind of seeing it i i, I think he could have said that and i think she was dumb to agree to it but at the same time they had been in that relationship she was pregnant, you know what I'm saying? It goes both ways. For the most part, you know, the lawyer was like, why, that's, that's still dumb for you to, you know, do all that or whatever. You know, she also brought up how she owes money for renovation she did to her home. She spent $16,000 to redo his room. She spent twenty. She spent $20,000 on a pool. Um, one, because they wanted, she wanted her son's room to look like a, a, a castle, and her son loved to swim, and so she went to a pool. I'm like, bitch, your son is two. He's two. You could have went right to Kmart, Kmart, Walgreens, Walmart, Amazon, Toys R Us, Build a Bear. I don't, you could have went anywhere and got him a little ass pool. You did not need to spend twenty grand on a pool for a two year old. Okay, you could have got him a little kitty pool. Okay, blow it up in the backyard. I feel like twenty grand for a pool. When I don't think she works like that. I don't. I don't know what she do. When I Google her, like a job don't come up. Tristan names come up and the baby names come up. So I feel like I don't know if she makes her own money to where 20 grand is nothing because she's a, a architect. 20 grand is nothing because she's an account exec at this front. I don't know what she does. To my knowledge, is nothing. Okay. But to spend that amount of money when it isn't your money to me isn't smart. Um, 20 grand for a pool for at that because he like he just turned two now recently or maybe three. Okay, he ain't older than three. But you been did the pool. You been did his room. So my thing is, you were spending money on a baby who was like an infant. He may like to swim, but he don't need no damn 20 grand. He don't need no for 20 grand of someone else's money. That's my issue. And then, you know, want his room to be a castle. It's a room. He gonna sleep there. By the time he realized it's a castle, he gonna want something different, okay? And... I mean, like, how, what did you get for 16 grand that it could be like, you did you get a castle bed? Okay, is there a drawbridge? Is there a moat around somewhere? Okay, is it a goddamn free, uh, fire breathing dragon? You know what I'm saying? Just burning shit up? Okay, is it nights? Okay, is it a round table in the room? Like, what did 16 grand cost? Because if six, 16 grand was like for a bed, you're dumb. If 16 grand was like to, to paint a castle, you're dumb. Paint them walls blue or green or yellow or whatever. Give him give him a toy castle in the corner and don't spend that kind of money on a room until he's maybe 13. Because at 13, things you may like a No, you know when he, when he's 10? Because like from 10 to around 14 years old, they like the same kind of thing. But when he's 1 or 2 or 3, he don't, you don't know if he like castles. You wasted the money. You could have used that money your damn self, girl. 
But I'm just saying. Anyway, you know, but I feel like I don't want people to like, oh, well, she said this and she said that. Well, she said it in court documents and depositions. That's what you do at court. But I'm not out here giving interviews about it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't make it be that. So she brings up how Tristan only saw the kid like eight or nine times, mainly because she said at first, when I first had him, when I was coming with the kid to see Tristan, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, come see me. But once she didn't want to really, you know, see, she didn't want to really deal with him, he kind of got standoffish. Men do that. Men be like, oh, you don't want me no more? What? F- well, fuck the kid. Can't forget the kid. And that's kind of what sort of happened. You know, we still saying fuck Chloe in all ways, on all days, every which way, because her truth was some bullshit. But still, you know, I just don't want it make, I don't want it looking like, that Jordan is out here recently giving interviews, not like she did a deposition in 2016 and it's just coming out now, some kind of way. Now, she may be leaking these these, these conversations and depositions, but, I mean, I don't think anyone is saying anything differently. Now, I'm saying when they, when her and, when Tristan and Chloe, first, when Tristan and Chloe first started dating, everyone said the same thing. He ain't shit, girl. He got somebody pregnant, girl. So, anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Um, what else I gonna talk about, y'all? Oh, Tammy Roman. Tammy Roman signed a deal. I want to be positive about things, y'all. And sometimes it don't be on the blog blogs. It just be on Instagram, okay? And Tammy Roman signed two deals with Mona. Scott Young from VH1. She is going to have two shows. They did not say the name of the shows, but it's like a production deal. And so she'll end up doing two shows. I'm trying to find out where it was. I saw it earlier. And, you know, I got to find it now. But, yeah, she's going to do two shows. It's going to be on VH1. I'm happy about that. Tammy sometimes isn't too funny, but sometimes she is funny. So that's always a good thing. Maybe it was, it wasn't a while, but what did I see it at? Because it was on two different, maybe, maybe it was Baller Alert. Baller. Baller Alert. But I may have seen Tammy post it. That's could be where it went um maybe i don't know where it, i don't see it nowhere now but yeah tammy has two shows i i don't think it's i don't think it's reality show stuff i think it's really um you know like scripted stuff that she's trying to do kudos to tammy look tammy has been around ever since like the first season okay the first season of real world was she i think was she that was with David. Yeah, I think it was like the first season, if I'm not mistaken. So she's been around for years. And even though, you know, sometimes she's a little fucked up or whatever, she has she has longevity. She's still working, getting them checks. So kudos to Tammy. I hope the shows are entertaining. Her Bonnet Chronicles, I did not like that much. She was funnier on IG than she was on that on that the the show that she tried to do on title. And some people it's only funny for a minute. It was some stuff. I mean, it, it truth be told. Um, anyway, but yeah, kudos to Tammy for that. Uh, and I'm, I'm go. I want to see what it is. Um. Oh, Ava DuVernay. Okay, Ava DuVernay, the Netflix show. Okay, so that's Ava with the real Exonerated Five. Now they're putting out here how they no longer, we're no longer calling them Central Park Five. Central Park Five was kind of given to them when they were. You know, being accused of this heinous crime, and you know, it kind of made them as monsters. The Exonerated Five is just them taking back who they are, and that is what Ava DuVernay said as well. Um, but when they see us has been the most watched series on Netflix in the U.S. every day since it came out. You hear that, people? Every day, okay. It says when they see us has gotten amazing attention. Since it premiered on Netflix on May 31st, that is a full 13 days ago, okay? The four-part series tells the story of five African-American and Latino teenage boys who were wrongfully convicted of a sexual of sexually assaulting an investment banker in Central Park in 1989. Um, it brings up how during their interviews with police, they were held without food for hours as the story shows them being coerced into saying things they saying they were involved in the crime. The five bo- boys who were known, girl, the five boys who are now men, Yusuf, Anton, and, and Tron, 
Kevin, Raymond, and Corey Wise has since been known, well, were known as Central Park Five. We're now calling them the Exonerated Five. Um, however, it's amazing that it has gotten so much, and I'm going to keep the picture, I want y'all to see these people's faces, okay? It's amazing how much attention has gotten. I told you, I watched all five I mean, all four parts, and even though it was heartbreaking to watch, I'm still so happy that I watched it because it was so educational and informational for us as people. We have to realize that you can have conversations with your children, and your children still may not know what they should do if they're ever being um, taken down to police, if, they, if, they, if they're ever being questioned by cops. Like, Kids may not know to tell the police, I want my guardian here because I'm underage. I'm not going to say anything. I want a lawyer. They may not be aware of their rights. So seeing this to me was like, hey, sister, did you tell DJ? Like if he, if God forbid, if he's ever taken out to a court station to ask them, he wants his guardian. Like this to protect his rights because sometimes you don't know what things cops will do to violate your rights. And this four part series tells it and is told in such an amazing way and as heartbreaking as it is and I tell y'all I cannot look at Corey Wise or the actor who played Corey Wise without getting teary out because I mean I think his name was Jarrell Jerome who played Corey Wise in the movie did such a phenomenal job that when I see pictures of him from the movie it still makes me cry because you know what I'm saying, but I'm like I'm I'm happy about that because I'm informed now, and we all say, oh, you gotta be woke, 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 woke. Being woke encompasses being woke currently in the present, you know, being woke for the future, but also being aware and woke from the past. Because if you don't know things that have happened, you can't protect people in the future to not have that same thing happen to them. So if you have not watched when they see it, if you feel like I can't take it, I can't take it, remember. Remember, let me put, let me let me let me let y'all see me. If you feel like you can't watch it because your heart can't take it, remember they lived it. They lived it. Okay, so don't feel like I don't want I I don't want to see it. It's too much. Watch it. I get if you was maybe old enough to know what happened back then. You're aware. I get you may not want to you know do that because you know the story. But if you like my age, watch it. Just watch it. I, I'm not going to watch it more than once now. Can't do that. But I watched it so intently, I don't have to watch it again. You know what I'm saying? It was it was really, really great. So, but again, we no longer refer to them as Central Park Five. We now refer to them as the Exonerated Five. And Ava said how, you know, we're hoping to release, you know, she said how they were hoping to release it around the 30th anniversary of the real events to memorialize what happened to the boys and to be able to now... That they are men, know that we do not call them Central Park Five. We call them the Exonerated Five, the Innocent Five. We reclaim their humanity that was stripped from them when they were called thugs, woodpack, wildlings. Um, that has been our goal and our intention. Um, and she said she's it's beautiful how um, the the community have rallied around them and held them up and has championed them and has loved on them. Um, and they, she said they really felt and they and I think it's bringing them. A sense of peace. And that's something else. That's something else. Like, they know people here. Like, you know how imaginary they probably felt the scene with Corey in jail saying, I just want someone to help me. I just need help because he was a kid in jail. Like, so imagine how ignored they felt for 12, 13, you know, so all these years. So we owe it to them to watch their story and you know and, and give them love from here to there okay so that was that okay that was that um and last but i got I, I, 30 minutes okay so cuba gooding jr okay <sighs> he was arrested okay <laughs> first of all he up his smile, okay? So he wasn't too sad. I think he thinks it's, 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 it's some bullshit and he can't believe what's going on. So he was arrested um, for, he was charged with forcible touching. 
forcible touching stemming from an incident that occurred when a woman accused him of groping her breast. Now, uh, allegedly, they say another woman came out and said, like, he touched her butt. I'm not sure about that, but they say that's what happened. Um, and the forcible touching charge is just a misdemeanor, but he was still arrested for it. Um, now, there's a video of the alleged incident happening, okay? And I'm going to try to show y'all the video, okay? Um, because it's on TMZ, and I don't want, you know, now I'm, it was on TMZ, now let's hope they don't shut my page down, not my page down, but they don't, um, take this down, but I have it up on my phone, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it in here, so y'all gonna see my phone again like y'all did last time, so again, now the video was very grainy, okay, let me try to push, push. And there's no, you know, audio. But, so that's Cuba sitting there in the corner with the black and white on, right? And that's his girlfriend sitting next to him. And you see? That's one thing you see. So, wait, I'm trying to bring, bring it up a little bit more for y'all. Well, that's as big as it goes. Um, The girl who just sat down, whose face is blurred, that's the girl. Now, you see him put, let me, let me rewind it. Okay, let me rewind it. So again, Cuba sitting there minding his own business. This is girlfriend comes in down next to him, and then as they sitting there, okay, as they sitting there chillaxing, the victim, the alleged victim, the accuser, the accuser walks up. Okay, her face is blurred, so you will see Cuba leans over and touches her thigh as he's sitting next to his girlfriend, and allegedly they're saying there's a little blurred vision. It's him. His hand goes up and touches her boot. And it's there for a few seconds, okay? And it's there. And then you see he then kisses her hands or something, okay? So we see that happen. You see this other man walk up, okay? And now I was four people sitting around chit-chatting, talking and whatnot. You're like, well, what's going on here? What's going on? So this is the weird part to me. It doesn't seem like she's upset that he touched her boob or her thigh, okay? It seemed like no one seen no one thought anything bad happened. You see the dudes in and there, you know, his girl still like no nothing like nothing happened. That's the weird part. Nothing happened from here. I'm just like, what's what's supposed to be going on? And again, the girlfriend, that's the girlfriend next to next to him, the the dude still in there. The girl who the accuser is still sitting next to his girlfriend. She, you see, it's just people everywhere. It's weird, okay? It's weird. Now, we see that he did touch her boob. That did happen. I guess what they're saying is, you know, it seemed as if it wasn't an issue initially. I guess that's the weird part. And this video is very grainy, so we can't really see what really happened. And then, as you see, quickly... Everybody kind of get up and starts walking. Cuba gets up and walks away. His girlfriend gets up and walks away. The white dude follows him. And so does the girl. And she just drinking her drink. Just drinking her drink. Now, there was also another video. Was it on here too? Now, this is the second video, okay? This is the second video where they're saying that when Cuba and the girlfriend was sitting somewhere else about 30 minutes later, the girl walked back up. Now, watch this video, y'all. Hopefully, an ad don't come on. Okay, so you see Cuba and the girlfriend sitting there. Now, Cuba is drunk. You can tell he's drunk in one second, okay? And it's also security guy standing there, too. The accuser come just slowly walking from the corner. You see the red little dot? Slowly walking in, and it's going, excuse me, sir. Okay, guess what? He touched my boob. I did what? He touched my boob. Girl, what are you talking about? Girl, I didn't do nothing. I, you know what? I don't have time for this shit. Okay, I think she tripping. I'm finna go. So, again, Cuba is sitting there, chit-chatting, gets up, stumbles a little bit because he's a little drunk. Okay, he's a little intoxicated. And he, excuse me, and walks away. Okay, he walks away. The girlfriend gets up, okay, and she's walking away. Security walks away, goes towards Cuba, and they all just walk away. But it, the weird part for me is the fact that I just don't understand what happens. I, I really, really, really don't. I don't, I'm like, I mean, did she wait 
to say he did it? Did she not realize he did it? When they got up, where did they go? To, like, where did they all get up and go? You know what I'm saying? That's the weird part. So, I think that's what his lawyers meant when they said nothing criminally happened. It was a thing of they were sitting there. He touched her leg and then touched her boob. I don't know why the fuck he touched her boob. I don't. But I told y'all, we, I have seen video of him getting down with his bad self. And, you know, I'm a, I, and I said, I said, I would not be surprised if he was sitting around and touched someone's boob. Again, not saying is right. Not saying is right. However, you, I feel like when someone say, oh, my God, I was a song that he touched my boob. Like, I, didn't, I, I feel like, okay, if someone touched your boob and you're offended, you instantly leave the situation. But she sat, they were still sitting there talking. I'm conflicted. You know what I'm saying? I don't think a girl. <sighs> and they do say so things say things have gotten even more complicated in the situation because a second woman has just come forward and accused him of groping her as well. Saying that the, the, the unidentified woman alleged that he grabbed her butts while at a New York nightclub butter. The two incidents do not appear to be related. And this is where things get weird because you're like, now nah, was people gonna keep? Well, he touched my ass too, and then it's like, okay, so he's a whole pervert, okay. But it's like, or is it like this? And it's you have to see if it's innocent shit or if it's you ain't shit shit. And that part, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I just have a thing where I feel like if somebody, if we sit there and you and you touch my leg, first of all. I, if you touch my leg, I'm going to move your hand. Like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> Can you stop it? The leg, the hand stayed there. And then when he touched her boob, like, his hand, I'm like, did she not? I say, was she too drunk to realize that his hand was on her thigh and her hand? I mean, in her breast? So I'm just confused about it. Because it did seem innocent as to where she didn't seem like she didn't, she didn't seem like he it was a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I need context. I need like did she say, Get your can we get your off my off my leg? And he said, you know what? All right, I'll grab your butt. I mean grab your boob. So I'm like, that's some wrong ass thing. But I'm like, y'all sat there and was talking and walked away together. Girl, I don't know. Anyway, that's the last story, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. I gotta go ahead and watch Growing Up Here by Atlanta. Oh Lord Jesus. Anyway, love you all. Peace.